kingdom come here let your will be done here in us Jesus you alone are Savior so the Set our hearts to war, to every eye will 
As I walk now through the valley, let your love rise above every fear. Like the sun shaping the shadow
we lift up one voice, singing hallelujah. To our God we lift up one voice, to our God we lift up one song, to our God we lift up one voice, singing hallelujah. To our God we lift up one voice, to our God we lift up one song, to our God we lift up one
voice to our God, we lift up one song to our God, we lift up one voice. To our God, we lift up one voice to our God, we lift up one song to our God, we lift up one voice. Singing my soul, my Savior God, to
Just give the Lord a play, uh, praise clap. You may be seated. Is this on? Is it on? Good, because I can't hear me. That's all right. Well, good morning, everybody. I'm so glad that you guys are here. You know what? Um, I just want to start, first of all, and just welcome not just you, but those who are online. And uh, can I, I'm just going to say something for you that are online this morning. Can you do me a favor? Can you just hit like or put a comment down? I just really appreciate it so that I can see who's, who's watching this morning and uh, what's going on. So if you could do that for me, that would be awesome. Uh, okay, wide hair. So before we get started, I just want to uh, ask a couple questions. I'm going to give. I'm going to have a couple of announcements. So you'll have to please excuse me. But the first announcement or, or question that I would have is, how many here, and I know that in online is how many here by the raising of hands would say that their desire is to see every person encounter or experience Christ in their life. You know what? That's an overwhelming. You know, every person would experience Christ in their life. And you know, I want to give you an opportunity at this point to be able to join us to see and to pray over our community. Because this Friday at 7 o'clock, we're going to be here. And we, every, for the last, uh, it's been two weeks now, that we have gone out and we've prayed. And so all of north part of, of Rocky has been prayed for. And now we're working our way through to the southern part. What we want to do is we want to pray over every street. We want to see every person uh, have prayer so that they might encounter or experience Christ. You see, that our five pillars starts with prayer. Amen? It's prayer is so, so important. Because when we start to pray, we start to see that God would break down the strongholds, break down those areas that would stop people from hearing the gospel. And that is so, so important, that they would have ears to hear, a heart to, to receive, and a willingness to respond to the gospel. Do we know, we, and we know that the God of this age has blinded the eyes of the unbeliever, so they can't even see the light of the gospel. So how are they going to do that? Well, first of all, let's go pray. Let's start to go and pray. And then we go on from prayer, we do worship. And on September 12th, we've got the time of from 9 till 6, a whole time of worship at the bottom of Main Street. Let me tell you, Every hour has been filled up already. Every hour has been set. So that's exciting. Praise God for that. But uh, you know, I, want to, I want to tell you, too, too, is we need volunteers. And so there's a volunteer list. And if you can, we're, we're going to, in fact, let me just tell you, people are really slow to volunteer, so we're going to start phoning every one on the list. So you know what? I'm, I'm sorry, but you know what? It's one of the things that really frustrate me as a pastor, but not just as a pastor, but in so many areas, is in Rocky Mountain House, when you ask for a volunteer, they never volunteer until the very last minute if something better doesn't show up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm, we're going to start phoning and we're going to start asking where you can serve. Because you see, if we want every person to encounter or experience Christ, we need to start to step out and start to believe God to do it. For the amount that we are engaged in God's work is what we're going to see take place at the end. So if we were to turn around and you know that you're going to go on a holiday, what is it that you're going to do? You are going to start booking your flight. You're going to start booking your hotel. And by the way, think about the hotel because we're going to get to that. Uh, you're going to start to get all your shots. You're going to start to do that. If you were to sit back and, and if, if the way we do things in the church, if we were to sit back and say, well, you know what? God's sovereign. God's going to do it, so I'm just going to wait until he gets it done. Number one, you would never buy your ticket. Number two, you would never uh, get your hotel booked. Number three, you would never get your shots. So let me ask you this, is if we know that God wants to reach our community, God wants to touch and, and every person to encounter Christ, what are we going to do? First of all, pray, and number two, we're going to volunteer to see what we can do. 
So September 12th, mark your calendar from 9 till 6. And we're going to be there, and we're going to serve, and we want every person to encounter Christ. Amen? So that's the, that's the first announcement. The second announcement is this. Um, when we start to see God move, and I, it's kind of story in a two-story part. Peter and the, and the rest of the disciples, they were out on the lake, and a storm rolled up. And actually, there's a couple stories here. The storm came, and, and they saw P Jesus walking on the water. And Peter says, if that's you, Jesus, tell me to come out on the water. What did Jesus do? He said, come on. Come on. Step out of the boat. Come on the water. Do you know that if, G if Peter did not step out of the, out of the boat, he would not have uh, encountered the power of God in his life. He wouldn't have encountered it. He would have no idea that he could have walked on the water. He would have said, oh yeah, that was, that was really great. Another story. Peter, again, Peter, you know, he's, he's a good one to pick on. Peter was out fishing. Jesus was there in the boat. And after word, Jesus said, throw your net on the other side of the boat. How many know that if, G if Peter didn't throw his net on the other side of the boat, he wouldn't have gotten all the fish that Jesus had prepared for him? Right? Is that, is that right? I'm going to, yeah. You know what? We don't access God's blessings and God's grace because Peter said, because you said so, I'm going to do it, and he did it. And so often, our lives are missing the blessings of God because we're not accessing it because we're not taking God at his word. And God's word says do this and we, and, and we should be stepping out and following through. We're going to be talking about accessing God's grace through faith in these next couple weeks. And I think it's one of those most important parts because, you see, we all live in such a way that our lives are so dependent upon us and yet we say we're depending on God. We don't access God's blessing because what ends up happening is we figure we're going to do it ourselves. And so I want, to, I want to tell you, keep your ears open as we start to go through this message. There is one scripture, though, in Malachi chapter 3 that says this. It says, bring all your tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Try me now in this. If God says, bring your, bring your tithe into the storehouse, bring your Bring your first fruits. Bring you the first part of your, of your income into the church. You know what? We don't talk about money too often. But I'm telling you, you want to receive the blessings of God is you have to be obedient to the very little things. And that's where God says, bring your tithe into the, into the storehouse. And then he says, try me. Go ahead. Try me in this. See if I will not open the floodgates of heaven. You know, we were okay about the fish. We're okay about the walking on water. But what are we doing about our finances? You know what? It's not about, I, I, it's not about me going in and trying to get money out of your pockets this morning, guys. It's about me telling you that there's a blessing that you will not receive if you don't. Because there's an access way, and that's through obedience, even in the small things. Amen? Are you, do you still, are, am I still okay? <laughs> We're going to uh, join. We're going to start again into uh, Unite 714. And uh, what we've done in, uh, in the last while, we've all stood and we've read through the scriptures and we pray and we prayed. So I want to invite you all to stand with me as we go through this seven, uh, Unite 714. Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 8 says this. And he told them a parable to the effect that they ought to always to pray and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused. But afterward he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not uh, beat me down by her continued coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the right, unrighteous judge says. And will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over, over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith 
on the earth. And then Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 12 says this, so that you may not be sluggish, but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit or access the promises. Let's pray. Lord, for the last few months we have been coming to you with one voice. From 170 nation, 179 nations around the world, we thank you for your mitigation of COVID-19. Without your divine aid, things could have been far worse. Yet many of us find ourselves in nations still in the clutches of this pandemic. Our econ economies have, been re have not recovered. Our lands are in deep need of spiritual and social healing. Despite these realities, we refuse to lose heart you promised to give justice to your people, and we cry out to you day and night, Lord, with one voice we ask you, Lord, eradicate COVID-19 and bring healing to our nations. Heavenly Father, you are not unjust judge. Even when the, when the answers to our prayers are seemingly delayed, there is a higher purpose at your work, and we continue to cry out before, you, before your throne, Father. Fill us with fresh power. Fill us with hope and fill us with your love. May we have the faith to, fu to fully communicate or cooperate with you when your spirit is freshly poured out on the earth. Father, send a fresh move of your spirit that will lead to the salvation of millions of people around the world. Lord, there are times when faith alone does not help us to see our prayers answered. It takes faith and patience to receive your promised breakthrough. Therefore, we refuse to quit, Lord. Continue to build in us a faith that does not wither and, in a, and a heart of, in the heat of crisis or break under the weight of impossibility. Lord, we pray that you would find faith in our hearts as you awaken your church and save the lost through the fresh outpouring of your spirit. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. I think this is so, imp so good that we could actually come together and we could pray with the 179 other nations. How many, when other, uh, what other time in the history of the world have we seen 179 nations praying with one voice? Never. Now, what would happen if because, and, and I, I'm believing God for, for a, a whole new uh, revival that would come because the churches, the church of God is rising up to pray and to believe God for something new. Well, this morning we are going to be talking about access into grace. And so I want to I ask you a question as we go along. You know, many of us have, had, have gone into hotels. We've gone and we've booked in a hotel, or we've gone to all-inclusive holidays. For those of you who've done all-inclusive, you get to the place, and you come up, and you give them your name, and you get the key. And that key gets you, first of all, into your hotel room. And everything in that hotel room is available for you, right? And that key also, and, and some of the places Amy got and I've gone, is gives you the access to the swimming pool, and it gives you the access to the hot tub, and it gives you the access to the weight room. I do not use the key for the weight room. You know, no, not even on all, you know. <laughs> and on an all-inclusive uh, holiday, that, that key, that because you are part of that, gives you access to all the food you want and all you want to drink. You see, you can get access to all of that. And if you were to come to, if I was to give you the key to my home, so if Amy and I go on holidays and I take out my key and I say, here, Thomas, here's my key. You've got full access. Whatever's in there is yours. You can use it. There's food in the freezer. Help yourself. The TV is there. Help yourself. Everything there, you have full access to. Now, how many know that if, if Thomas walked into my house with the key, knowing he's got full access, if he was to just walk in and sit on the couch and do nothing, and he sat there all two weeks while Amy and I are four weeks, that Amy and I are on holidays, how many know that he's not going to have a good time? He is going to starve because he didn't access that which was he's given to him. Hear me with this. 
because I think that we miss out in all the, pro- all the things that God has given to us because we don't access it. And, we don't, and, and all that stuff is given to us because of God's grace, which is we don't deserve it. It's God freely giving us what we don't deserve. But you see, we look at it and we say, it all depends upon me. It all depends upon what I can do. So if I'm going to, if I want to access God's strength, I start going, God, give me strength, give me strength, and then I try and do it on myself. Did we access God's strength? No. We need to learn what it is to access God's grace in its fullest. And I think we've missed it. I think many of us miss it because we're still so caught doing things in our own strength. So just because you have a key doesn't mean that you can enjoy the full benefit, not of the the hotel or the full resort or my home. Just because you have a key, you have to learn what it is to access the benefits. You can wish. You could have all that. Thomas could sit there and say, oh, I wish I had a good meal. Meanwhile, there's five T-bone steaks sitting in the freezer. There's all the, there's all the potatoes and all the vegetables sitting there. There's not T-bone steaks, by the way. But anyways, but there's, everything is available, and here he is starving, wishing. Oh, I hope somebody brings me food. Oh, I hope somebody helps me out. Man, there's stuff right there. Help yourself. You know, you can wish, you can hope, you can go and talk to other people and say, oh, boy, Pastor Trevor and Amy didn't help me out. Is that the reality? No. It's all there. When we look at our new lives in Christ, we're given access by faith into grace. And, I, and we're in Romans 5, and we're going to get there, but I want to just bring this all together. When we look at our new lives in Christ, we're given access by faith into grace so that we will reign in life. How many know that you can reign in this life? You know, we don't think about that. But God's word tells us, Romans 5, 17, that the overflow of grace and of righteousness so that you can reign in life. This morning, I want to take a look at the book of Romans, or not not the whole book, sorry, uh, the the chapter of Romans chapter 5. We're not going to go through it all. Actually, we're going to go through very little of it. But Martin Luther said this about this one chapter. He said, in the whole Bible, there's hardly another chapter which can equal this triumphant text. He saw something that was in Romans chapter 5 that changed a lot in his life. Not only Romans 1, 16, 17, the righteous will live by faith, but in Romans chapter 5, there was something that he's given, some understanding that made a difference in his life, that he could call it a triumphal text. And so what we're going to do is I want to start by reading Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 5, as well as verses uh, verses and 17. So here it is. Therefore, Romans chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We have also obtained access through him by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also rejoice in our afflictions, because we know that affliction produces endurance. Endurance produces proven character, and proven character produces hope. This hope will not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured out in our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who, has given, who was given to us. And then down to verse 17. Since by one man's trespass, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive the overflow of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you are speaking to us, and I pray that right now that you would open our ears. God, we just, we don't always hear it, and and so often we miss it. But Lord, I would pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come and that you would bring revelation to us today. 
that, Lord, that we would grow and that we would learn what it is to live and walk in the, uh, in the grace that you have given to us for today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Got to make sure I'm on the right s- screen here because, uh, yeah. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 in the New Living Translation said this, Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege. Did you hear that? Because of God's grace, or because of our faith, Christ has brought us into a place of undeserved privilege where we now stand. And we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. You know, up to this point, Paul has been talking about this whole, we we went through Romans chapter 1, and up to this point, Paul has been talking to us about all the thunder is rolling. Uh, uh, squirrel. Uh, Paul has been telling us that, that we are all unrighteous and, and, and that God's wrath is coming and we need salvation. All through Romans chapter 1, all the way up to verses 3 and 40, uh, 3 verse uh, 20. Paul is telling us how guilty we are. And then in 3 verse 23, for the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life. For all, or That's 6.23. 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You see, Paul has been working through and he's coming all the way through and he's telling us that this is what's going on. And he's telling us the guilty sentence has come. But when he comes to the end, he says this in verse 1, he says that the justified or the righteous has now uh, come and, and their whole guilty sentence has been changed. We're no longer found guilty, but because of what Jesus has taken has done through the, his death and resurrection, because he died for us, he took our sin so that we might become righteous, so that we would be made justified, just as if we had never sinned. So because we have been declared righteous by faith, Paul now tells us there's practical benefits to that righteousness. And that righteousness comes not because of anything that we have done, not by works of our own righteousness, not because we've done anything good. Righteousness comes because God did through Jesus and gave it through grace, and we have access to salvation through faith. You're following me through with this. So here's the first one. There's two benefits, and they're just not just interesting ideas. I want you to see them. First of all, the first benefit is, one, number one, is peace with God. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God. Ephesians chapter 2 talks about the fact that Paul tells us, he says, that we were dead in trespasses and sins. We were by nature ob children of wrath. God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love for us, made us alive. You see, Paul in, in Ephesians 2 was telling us that this is our state. Many of us didn't even realize that we were outside of peace with God. Many of us didn't even realize that we didn't have an enemy or one that stood against us. We figured we were all okay. But the reality is, is that outside of Christ, we are standing opposed to what God has. We are separated away from the life of Christ. We are pulled away from his peace. And we need to come back into that place. How many of you have ever had an issue with another person and you know that there is no peace between the two of you? Come on. Been there, done that. Got a few t-shirts. But you know what? When there's no peace between two people, you don't go and have coffee with them. You don't go and talk with them. You don't have lunch with them. And if you see them coming in one door, you go out the other. In some instances. Let's just put it that way. And so many people don't understand that they don't have peace. And when they get, when they get confronted with Jesus, what ends up happening is, I don't want to hear about it. They're blinded to the fact of their separation from God. But where they come into is they, all they hear is the condemnation that comes from Christians' mouths. Jesus said in John 3, 16, for God so, or God said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, 
that whoever believes in him would not perish but have the everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. We end up condemning the world, but God didn't come down to condemn it. He came to save it. And the message of the gospel is all about the salvation that comes through Christ. I'm going to get off my pocket here. Topic, not talkic. This is interesting how your words get mixed up. But you see, the, the world never realizes that they have been separated from God. They don't realize that they have no peace. It's kind of like driving down the highway, and I've never had this, driving down the highway. I got caught once outside of a town. But anyways, driving down the highway, doing well over the speed limit, and not realizing the red and, wh- red and blue lights flashing behind you. You don't realize you're in trouble until you look in the rearview mirror, and guess what happens? Right away you see it, and you pull your foot off the gas. Or you see them coming down the road and you see the police officer. You pop your foot off the gas and you tap the brake just to slow down a little bit so that maybe he didn't catch you. Let me tell you, people don't understand that they are separated from God. They don't have peace. And, they're not con- and when they're confronted with it, they need to know that it's not God didn't come to destroy them or to condemn them, but to bring peace back into their lives. And you and I find that peace. Now we can come before our Heavenly Father, and and we'll get to this, but we have access to His throne room. How many took advantage of accessing God's throne room today? We come in prayer. We can come before our Father, not because, no longer having to fear, but because we have peace with God. That's what His, that's what salvation did. That's what righteousness does for us. We now have peace with God. So, we come to the second ble- benefit. Let's see if, did I, I'm keeping on forgetting. The second benefit is this, is we have access into this grace. We have obtained access through him by faith into this grace that we now stand. Let me give you a couple uh uh, quotes or, or uh, definitions. It says access into grace is the second benefit and it simply means being able to get to what we need. When you have access, you are able to get to what you need. Just like Thomas. If he, if he needed food, he had access to get to what he needed. When you were in the hotel, you have access to get to what you need. And so this is that, that grace that we can bring into. The idea of being given access is is that of an introduction to the presence or into the chamber of a monarch. I don't know if you've ever thought of this, but if you're given access to the queen or to someone else of great importance, do you just walk up, walk in the door and say, hey, how are you doing? That's not what you do. You come into the into a, a, one area, and the person meets there, meets you there. They, then you say, "I've got this appointment with the queen or with so and so," and they say, "Okay, we we'll just wait here." They go to the door, and they open the door, and they go. And, and I'll just use I'll use Thomas because he's sitting there. It's good to sit close. I, I, I really appreciate Thomas, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, they open the door, and they say, "Hey." Trevor, or Thomas, is here to see you. And the guy says, okay, bring him in. The person, and and you got to walk your way through this, because this this was an aha moment for me. Think of your place with Christ. Before, you were separated from Christ. And then, this man, Jesus, came. He paid the price so that you could have access to the Father. And he says, come with me. I want to introduce you to the Father. Hey, Father, Blanche is here to see you. He's given you access to the Father. What? Do you think maybe we've missed this concept of access 
into all that God has for us. Because Jesus is the one who opens the door and he allows us in. Wow, what a privilege that we have. Another word for grace. And we've been given access into a grace through faith on what Jesus has done. We have access to grace. Another word for grace is God's favor. Throughout the Bible, the word grace is used in various ways. It can mean acceptance. So we've been accepted by Christ because now when we accept, when we ask Jesus to come and forgive us our sins, he accepts us into the beloved. We're now accepted into his family and now we have received that grace to be accepted. But it can also carry the meaning of approval, support, power, strength, goodwill, kindness, and preference. It's the kindness of God through which he exerts his influence in our lives, turning them to Christ. It keeps, strengthens, increases us in faith, in knowledge, and affection, and it stirs us to exercise God's virtues. Grace is more than just to save us, but grace is given so that we might reign, that we might live our lives to the completeness that God called us to. Live your life worthy of the gospel. Live your life worthy of the calling that you have been given. How many need strength today? How many need help today? How many need wisdom today? That comes because of grace. Grace and all that it encompasses is God's free gift to those who are undeserving. God's riches at Christ's expense. God's riches. How rich is God? And I, I, I just want to step back. I'm not trying to tell you a prosperity message. I'm trying to tell you to see what God has done for you through Jesus. And that you have access to that. God's riches at Christ's expense. There's a riches that we have that is given. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. And all through Paul's writing, and especially in chapter 5 and verse 1, Paul can't seem to, to speak of the gospel without going back and reminding us it's a gift of grace. The good news of Jesus Christ comes because of this gift of grace for us. So this grace that we now stand, first of all, in being accepted, is a gift for everybody that would open their hearts to Christ. It's a gift. Jesus died on the cross for all mankind. Sin was taken care of, but now you have to, re you have to ex receive it. You have to gain access. You have to get access to it, and that's offered to you now. Would you receive it? Salvation is offered to all who would receive it. They access the salvation through faith, and many of you have already received uh, that salvation. And not only access to salvation, but I want to give you another scripture, and it's immeasurable riches. For those of you who have got through the study on Ephesians, you'll, you'll see this quickly. Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 5 to 7. It says this, For you are saved by grace. He also raised us up with him and seated us with him in, heavenly, in the heavens in Christ Jesus so that in the coming ages he might display the immeasurable riches of his grace through this kindness to us in Christ Jesus. We're saved by grace and now he wants to... Uh, he wants the immeasurable riches of God's grace to be seen in our lives through faith in Christ because of that same grace. We have access to immeasurable riches of Christ. Faith in Jesus and all that he did for us makes us righteous now and gives us access to what we need in our lives for the rest of our lives. 
God's grace gives us access to all God's promises. That could have been another point I put up there, but it gives us access to all the promises of God. Let me give you this scripture. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 to 4. It says this, His divine power, what, does that pow- what is that power, the, the word is that, is grace. So we could say it this way, His divine grace has given us everything required for life and godliness. Everything that is required for life and godliness. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Through the knowledge of him who called us, and that knowledge, again, is not just head knowledge, but it's a relationship knowledge. I, get to, I know him. I have a relationship with him. And he's given us everything we need for this. By his own glory and goodness, by these he has given us very great and precious promises. So that, so through his glory and goodness, gives us great promises, precious promises, so that through these promises, you may share in the divine nature. So that you can have access to the divine nature. It's no longer this sinful nature. It's God's nature in me. I have access to this divine nature, escaping the corruption that is in this world. When you go back to Ephesians 2, we we recognize that uh, God will never stop dealing with, with us on the basis of, he will never stop dealing with us on the basis of grace and will forever continue to unfold the riches of grace through us, through, to us throughout eternity. God's grace makes available to all who believe a life that is, number one, real, genuine, active, vigorous, and devoted to God. God's grace can be accessed so that we could live our life fully. We could have true life. God has given us his precious promises. Now, let me see if I've got it. We can get 10 benefits of grace in our lives. Now, I'm going to give you 10, and it's going to be quickly so that you can hear it. So here they are. Number one, we're helped by grace. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. Let us approach the throne of grace. Hebrews 4, 16. The second one is we're forgiven by grace. Though we don't deserve it, God wipes our slate clean clean by his grace. Isaiah 43, 25. I sweep away your transgressions for my own sake and remember your sins no more. Psalms 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far have I removed your transgressions from you. We are sustained by grace. God will never ask you to do something that he doesn't give you the ability and the strength and the power to do. Philippians chapter 2, verse 13. For it is God who is working in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 9. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. We're healed by grace. Psalms 103, for he forgave our sin, our iniquity. He heals all our diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. He crowns you with faithful love and compassion. He satisfies you with good things. Your youth is renewed like the eagle's. Isaiah 53, verses 4 to 6. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses and carried our pains. But we in turn regarded him as stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for by, because of our rebellion, crushed because of our iniquities, punished for our peace was on him, and we have been healed by his wounds. We all went astray like sheep. We have all turned to our own ways, and the Lord has punished him for the iniquity of us all. Luke chapter 3. Verses 18 and 19, Jesus said, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me uh, to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim and release, release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set the oppressed free. We're given rest by grace. Matthew chapter 11. Can I tell you, just a quick, we're just about done, but let me tell you, I had a phone call this week from Rudy's sister. 
Rudy is uh, is sitting in the hospital and his head's getting heavier and 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 the in, in all intents purpose. But by the power of God, he's going to he's going to be dying soon. But his sister calls me up and talks to me, tells me, and starts to cry. And then she turns around and tells me, but my dad has to have open heart surgery. So you're seeing this and it's starting to come down. And you could see the weight. And I said, let, let me tell you, this is what the Bible tells you. She said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened down. And the rest of the verse says, and I will give you rest. You see, Jesus, Jesus was offering her access to the rest because of what he did. Now, what all she had to do is say, God, help me. And this is what I did. And it's by faith. We receive it by faith. And we're going to get to that maybe next week. I've got to, I'm working through some things. But the part is this. She now, at, right after I told her and I prayed with her, guess what? She said the first words that came out of her mouth, I feel like a weight has been rolled off. You see, she accessed the strength. And that's what all of us have to do. Okay. Before I get going too far again, we're given talents by grace. Romans chapter 12 and verse 6. And I won't take time to read it, but it talks about the, the, the talents, the gifts that God gives us. And they're called grace gifts. They're given by His grace. Not that we deserved it, but because of His great love. Number seven, we are used by grace. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 7. I was made a servant of this gospel by the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. God uses us to fulfill his purposes on the earth. And he does that by giving us the grace to be able to accomplish it. We're protected by grace. Jude 1, verse 24, Now to him who is able to protect you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory without blemish and, without, and with great joy. And number, three, and the number 9 is we're transformed by grace. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. And 2 Corinthians 3, 18 says, And we all with unveiled faces behold the glory of God are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. And the last one we're going to talk about, and just really quickly, is we're matured by grace. Second Peter 3 and verse 18 says, But grow in the grace and the knowledge of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We went through those fairly quickly, but what I wanted you to hear is there is so much that is given because of God's grace. And we have that ability to access it, not because of anything we have done, but because of what Jesus has done. All God's promises are given to us because of grace. And what I have given is only a small portion that God has done through Jesus Christ. So what did God give us grace for? It's a good question, and we're going to answer that next week. And how do we access it? Well, we've talked about faith. It's an interesting parts to that, and I won't, I'm not going to, again, we're not going to go too far with that either. But this grace is made available. Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God and our Lord Jesus Christ, and we have also obtained access into this grace. And the very first step, of gaining this access comes when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. That's the very first step. For we have been separated from God, we need peace. And when we turn and we ask Jesus to come and forgive us our sins, we are then step into that first stepping place. Like Thomas, stepping into our house, it's that first step in. And then he has free access. He has access to everything. And the key is by faith, believing that God has that for him. So this grace that we've been talking about is offered freely to those who would turn to Christ. And if you've never received the free gift 
of grace. Whether you're here, whether it's online, if you've never received this free gift of God's grace, today is the day that you can receive it. And I want to invite you to pray with me in this. To say this, Jesus, I am a sinner and I need your salvation. I believe you died for me and rose again. I now call upon your name and ask you to save me. Thank you. Amen. Let me tell you, this is the, this is the very start of your life. You've been given access to salvation. Now you're given access to so much more that God has that you can have a new life and have a full life in Christ. I'm going to invite you all to stand with me. I'm going to invite Amy to come up like we have been doing in the last number of years. Weeks. Years. Yeah, it feels like years, my dear. <laughs> Sometimes it does. You, not that you're coming up, but it's all this, is, this whole COVID thing feels like way too many years. But for weeks, we've been just coming and we've been praying. And I want to invite you, you know, if there's something that's been going on in your life and you need to access some grace, you need help, I just want you to raise your hand this morning. I need help this morning. It's all right. You can be honest. On the on line, too, if you need help. Maybe you're needing wisdom today. Maybe you're needing strength. Maybe you need healing. Maybe you need God to do something in your family's lives. The first step is to access, is to lift your hand and say, God, I need help. That's a good part. That's a good start. I need help. So just lift up your hand and we're just going to pray. Father, this morning, Father, you see every hand that's raised. You see what's been going on in their lives. You see the need. And they cry out to you, say, God, I need your grace today. I need your grace. Because I can't do it on my own. I need strength. I need wisdom. I need healing. I need hope. I need, to, I need breakthrough from despair and discouragement. I need your strength, oh God. Help me. And just as we prayed at the very beginning, Father, it says, you are not an unjust judge. You're not unjust. But you will give that when we cry out to you. Lord, we need to receive it. And Father, thank you for your grace that is given. And now, Lord, we pray, bless each one as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. All right? The Lord bless you. Have yourself a great week.